This is Matt Russell from the FX Power Course, and welcome to the Daily FX Walkthrough. So here are the four pairs that I will be discussing this evening, the Euro Pound, the Aussie Kiwi, the Pound Swiss, and the Euro Swiss. So let's go ahead and pull up the charts. The first chart, let me go in order here, is the Euro Pound, and this is the hourly chart. And this is a trade that I mentioned last week, which would be this long wick up there, uh, trying to get a short entry, placing our stop just above that, that long wick. And now that's, as we speak right now, that's a little too far away to justify an entry. During last night's session, here was a good example of a simple resistance line. Prices bounced against that line a few times and then fell back down. We've had a brief rally since that point. So if you're still in the trade uh, that was entered based uh, with your stop above that long wick, I would stay in the trade maybe move the stop uh, from that point, which would, again, be a, just above the high of that long wick candle, um, and exit the trade on maybe about, place your stop about 50 pips above this resistance line, or you would exit a trade on an hourly close, or a trick I like to use is two hourly closes, very, very sophisticated, above that resistance line. Um, so that's the trade moving forward. Also, if prices do come up, if you're flat right now, um, during the next 24 to 48 hours, if prices do come up to that, to that resistance line, uh, that could be a basis for a short entry as well, placing our stop 50 pips above the resistance line and again, maybe a double close on the hourly above the line. However, please keep in mind that the more times a resistance line is tested, the more likely it will fail. So if prices were to come up to that line once again, I would be a, a little reticent to enter a trade for that reason. But it's still a valid line until we have the close above. The next chart is the Aussie Kiwi, and not much has changed here. This is the resistance line that I added to the chart last week. And we can see the prices have uh, been contained, at least for the past few sessions, by this resistance line. I was mentioning how uh, the ideal situation might be a move down to that 38.2. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. We'd, we'd need a very sharp break right now. And again, as I mentioned, this line is extremely steep, so the chances of it of it uh, being violated are high. In fact, prices right now are at the resistance line. And I, and I really maybe right here for the, for the first test of the line, you might get a little 50 pip or 100 pip, pip move uh, back to the downside off the resistance line. But again, it's a very steep line, um, so keep your risk very tight. I, I don't have much confidence in this line, but again, until we have a close above it, it's still a valid resistance line. The next chart is the pound Swiss, and not much has changed here. Uh, this was that simple support line. This was the uh, recommendation that I had at the beginning of last week, uh, using that line, expecting it to act as resistance, the previous support line acting as resistance on the opposite side. And right now, uh, prices did sell off a little bit. And one thing I wanted to, to mention is we had a little sell off here. Uh, that was the first break of the line, and then we had a little bit of a consolidation pattern and then a rally. So uh, in my opinion, this could be corrective price action. So what does that mean? Uh, the bottom line is that we, we could experience a rally here to, to the upper, to the resistance line, again, that, that former support line. So that's something we can look for. If, uh, as Mark Twain once said, history doesn't repeat, it rhymes. So it's not, a, you know, it's not an exact pattern, but we have a doji down here, then a rally. We have a doji right here, and I would uh, guess that the chances are higher that we have a rally here. But maybe that just means, you know, 65, uh, 35 or something like that. The next chart is the Euro Swiss and not much has changed here either. Uh, this is the resistance line that I've been using for the past several reports, looking for prices to come up uh, to that resistance line. However, uh, if we zoom in a little bit, looking at the candlestick patterns here, um, and, and this does look a little toppish, uh, but again, I, I just don't like this trade uh, only because, and the trade would be uh, placing our stop just above these long wicks here, looking to get an entry that would justify a favorable risk reward, but I don't like entering trades uh, sort of in no man's land, which would be about 100 pips beneath a very clear resistance line. So this is something that we might just keep on the radar screen. Ideally, we would get a little move up to that resistance line where we could then uh, have a, you know, a clear basis for our trade. Again, this is Matt Russell from the FX Power Course. Thanks for listening.